Hello everyone, this is João, and today we're going to talk about the DNA sequencing known as the Sanger method. And what this is, is a very famous method nowadays used in labs to find or des describe sequences of DNA fragments or DNA molecules. So if you want to find a particular nucleotide sequence in a DNA fragment, then this would be a method to consider. Now, what I'm going to do here on this tutorial is give you the basic principles of the Sanger method, but on a later tutorial I want to go into a little bit more detail on how it's automated so you can describe longer sequences of DNA such as the ones found in the human genome. Now, the first thing that I need to discuss here on the Sanger method is give you an idea of the things that you need to use in this method and then we're going to describe them later on in this tutorial. Now the first thing is a radioactive primer. You need it to be radioactive so you can later on observe the fragments under auto radiography. Now the second thing is a DNA polymerase or an enzyme that will allow DNA replication. Third one is an obvious one. You need DNA uh, nucleotides or building blocks, and this is found in the form of DNTPs or deoxyribonucleotide triphosphates with the bases adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Now the key thing here is this fourth element that you find here on this list, and this is the DDNTP. This is a chain termination block that you're going to use in the Sanger method. And what this do, and we're going to see a little bit later on, is this, this di-deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate, long name, is very similar to the deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate, but these one here will terminate the sequence or the chain uh, when it's being replicated. And we're going to see later on how these work. Now, one thing that I want to show you here is compare the DNTPs with the DDNTPs. And I have here two, two nucleotides two drawings of nucleotides, so I can exactly compare this, the deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate, and as you can see on this one, we have three phosphates, and then in the di-deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate, we also have three phosphates, and the bases on both, so that can be adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. The particular thing or the particular difference between a deoxy, deoxyribonucleotide is the fact that this DNTP has one hydroxyl group here on the third carbon. Now here, as you know, uh, this is a common nucleotide found in a DNA molecule and this has no hydroxyl group or no oxygen in the second carbon. That's why we call it deoxyribonucleotide. Now the particular thing about this chain termination DDNTPs is that they don't have the oxygen on the second carbon but they also don't have an oxygen here on the third carbon. That's why we call it di, meaning two, deoxy, meaning lack of oxygen in this pentose sugar. This is the main difference between the DNTPs and DDNTPs, and for that reason, the DNA polymerase will recognize this and as soon as they see that one of these have been has been introduced in the sequence then the replication will stop and this is the key thing about the Sanger method and we're going to see this later on. 
Now say that you have one DNA fragment and you want to find out the exact sequence of nucleotides, as we can see here. So at this point is unknown. You don't know the exact sequence as I'm giving you here right now. So you can understand how this Sanger method will work. Now you have lots of copies of this DNA fragment in a solution and you will add a primer. So you will add a primer that is radioactively labeled. Very important feature. So this primer needs to be radioactively labeled so we're able to visualize these fragments later on in this method. Now you have a primer. You will also have, remember from that list that I gave you in the beginning, a DNA polymerase. So the DNA polymerase will be present, so it will produce or attempt to produce more fragments, similar fragments to this one. And also the building blocks that are important, the DNTPs will be present. So this will be replicated and we will produce more copies of this DNA fragment that you want to sequence. Now the key thing here, the key thing of the Sanger method is that we are going to have four separate containers and on each container they're going to have the chain termination DDNTPs part of the list also that I gave you in the beginning. So these containers have the different DDATP, the DDTTP, the DDGTP, and finally the DCTP. So all the DDNTPs. There are the chain termination nucleotides and why are they their chain termination nucleotides? Because right now we're going to throw all of this into these containers and what's going to happen is that the DNA polymerase will start replication using the building blocks to form more copies of this but the trick here is that for because we also have these DDNTPs present now, what's going to happen is every time that the DNA polymerase, let's say, attempts to bind one of these, what we'll do, th these will do will terminate the replication, will terminate the DNA synthesis. So for that matter, we're going to be left with variations with different types of fragments. So one example here in the DDATP container, what's going to happen is say the DNA polymerase is starting to synthesize another fragment and what happens at this point and as you can see here is that it might add one DDA TP. And if it does, then immediately stops and you form this copy right here, this fragment. Now it can also happen that you start with one DNTP or one DATP and then have one DDATP added and then it terminates at this stage here and forms this fragment right here. And as you can see, I'm not going to go on, but you get the idea of how this works. So the DNA synthesis is proceeding until it meets a chain termination nucleotide, a DDNTP, and for that reason it will form this variations, these variations here specific to this sequence that we have right here. Remember that we produce these fragments due to the fact that we use different types of chain termination nucleotides. Now what we're going to do is separate the fragments by size, very important, using a denaturing, so a denaturing page or polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. 
One very important thing to remember from gel electrophoresis is that we're going to run a current going from a negative to a positive electrode and also that the smaller or the smallest molecules will travel or migrate further down and the largest ones will be left behind. Very, very important. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to throw in all these solutions in the gel that contain the different fragments and the corresponding chain termination nucleotides. Now what we're going to do afterwards is to run the gel and we're going to be able to find all of these bands and keep in mind that one band corresponds to one fragment, one of these fragments that you see here. Very important. Now another important thing that I need to mention is that even though I made these bands in different colors so you can associate them to the corresponding chain termination nucleotide, it's important to say that in, re in the real world you're going to see that due to the fact that we label the primer with a radioactive label and also due to the fact that this primer is found in all of these fragments here we're going to be able to see only one color and not all these colors that you see here very important but in this case we should see these bands in the same position that you see here now I'm going to try to delete here what I just did so I have some space to explain to you how now you're able to read the sequence by looking at the gel. So once you're visualizing this gel here with all these bands and you know that each band corresponds to one of the fragments produced by the chain termination nucleotides now you need to remember that the original DNA molecule or the DNA fragment that you want to sequence is going from a 3 prime to a 5 prime and the synthesis of the new fragments is going from a 5 prime to a 3 prime meaning that the new fragments are being produced in this manner so A, A, G and so on and so forth and if we use the chain termination nucleotide, meaning that for every added nucleotide there will be a cease of DNA sy synthesis or cessation of a DNA synthesis, that means that the smallest fragments will be found here. So the first ones will be found at the 5' prime down here and the, the largest ones when we're getting to the 3 prime position should be found here. Now the other step that you're going to do to start sequencing is you're going to find the first bend, meaning that this bend corresponds to the very first, very first nucleotide that was added. And in this case was a chain termination nucleotide because it was a the DNA synthesis stopped immediately after the first nucleotide added. So you can find it on the A. So you would say, or in the adenine, so you would say that the first, the very first nucleotide will be an adenine. Now if you move to the second band that you can find further down would be this one here and I'm going to change colors because it's becoming a little bit confusing. So this would be the second band that you would find and you could also say that it's an A, it's an adenine. The third one, if you go up, then would be this one be a larger segment because right now we're looking at a segment that is comprised of two A's and a G, so a A A G. You would see that this would correspond to this band here. And you would also know that then the next the next nucleotide would be then a G. And this is how you would proceed 
with the sequencing of this particular DNA fragment or with any other fragment using the Sanger method.